Right, this is slightly weird. Um, it's been probably a week, maybe 10 days, since I filmed the last bit. Now I know to you it's only going to be seconds, and for the life of me I can't remember what we did on the last bit. But I've been waiting for bits and pieces. So I started to um, put the seat cover on. Um, because I was waiting for the replacement parts for the, the throttle, the throttle cable, the kill switch. I just wasn't happy with them. Um, and I, I'm, I said that in the last video. And honestly, that throttle is absolute shite. When I take it off, I'll tell you the name of it. I just can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so I've got some bits and pieces here. You remember I said I had issues with the cable marrying up to the throttle assembly both were supposed to fit the bike but they didn't fit each other so we got genuine Honda cable throttle cable we've got I can't remember what bloody make this is now Domino and it's supposed to be a really good quality throttle so I've got that, so that's going to be going on. I've got original Honda grips, because obviously, well the one on that side, I was thinking I'm going to have to cut it off. But I'm going to lose it anyway, whether I cut it off or whether it comes off with the throttle. So I've got um, original Honda ones, and they're exactly the same pattern as the ones I've got on there. Those were copy Hondas, and these are genuine Hondas. See? Well, see, the I think the, the original idea was to do this as a budget rebuild. A lot of the budget has gone out the fucking window. Um, but hey ho. Um, so yeah, I was putting the seat cover on and having major issues with the staples. Now I got, I'll put my way now. I've got four industrial staplers, all slightly different, but like really powerful ones. I mean, they'll go into wooden that, no worries at all. Um, I've even used them to go into block work and that, and they've been fine. Trying to get them into the plastic of this seat? What a fucking palaver. I, I swear to God, I must have used probably 250 staples and only managed to get half of them to stay in. And then I bought an air stapler. I thought that's going to be the only way to go. So I got that, fired that up. What a piece of piss. Bang, 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 bang. So they're on. Covers on. I've got one little tiny crease there that I can't get out. But I think it's because the foam is a little bit out of shape because when I um, just put the, the pressure back on it, which I think is what's going to happen when you've got the lug there on the tank in and the back bolted down, I think it's going to pull it like that anyway. <coughs> so I can just sit up there for a the minute. But already with the tank just sitting there and the seat just sitting there, it's looking a million dollars. There we go. Um, so I'm not going to bother to film changing the throttle to throttle cable and the cutout switch where's the body getting worried now what have I done with that there it is there's another cutout switch there um, what I didn't like about this cut off switch let me just move you around a little bit and I'll show you so that's got that what I don't like is all this bloody wiring sticking out of here with the um, the insulation that goes over the single wires should come right up to the button and no matter what I did I just couldn't get it to move because it's melted at the other end into position so I thought well I could take it all apart and put some heat shrink on this end but then I wasn't overly happy so um, yeah did the best thing and replaced it 
How many minutes have we got left on there? Got three minutes. Okay, so yeah, I'm determined that um, I'm going to make a push forward. I was getting really sort of dejected, really, because um, bits not arriving, bits coming wrong, bits coming as crap. Um, so the original rear rim and spoke set that got sent was wrong. They sent for a 89, I think it was, onwards. Um, but it drops down from a 36 spoke to a 32 spoke. So I sent that back. Then the guy that was helping me out and doing relacing that one after I'd 95% done the front one on my own, um, he sorted that for me. Then he went away, then he come back. Then I found there was another issue and the bloody spokes are wrong. So um, we've got the right number of holes on the rim, we've got the right diameter of rim, we've got the right width rim, half the spokes are right, half of them are wrong. So they've had to go back again. So that's pissing me off. Um, I think once the, once the wheels come back, I can then get the, I could lay the cables for the, for the rear brake, the cable, sorry, for the rear brake. Um, but I don't really just want the caliper hanging there. So I'm just going to wait and then when the wheel comes back, it can all go back in together properly. I've got new braided hoses up there. This is what happens when I get bored. Um, I buy stuff. <laughs> uh, so yeah, today's Friday. I've been on the crap shift this week, finishing at 8 o'clock in the evening. Um, but I wanted to come out here and finish that off now I've got the right staples. Oh, staples. <laughs> Talk about the wrong things coming. So, when I ordered the staple gun, it told me the size of the staples. So, you know, there's a... There's my fucking glasses. I thought, shall I go for 6mm? Shall I go for 8mm? And I had some 10mm ones that I've been banging in and they were a bit long. But I've got some 8mm ones as well. So, yeah, I've got 8mm. Tried them and they seem to be about the right length. So, when I ordered the air stapler, the staples didn't fit. They were the wrong width. So I thought, okay, I'll order the right ones. So, I ordered what should have been the right staples. How many is in there? 5,000 galvanised staples. Do they fit? Do they fit? So this camera is getting sneaky because it's now cutting off and it's doing it so quietly that I don't know. So I don't know how long I've rabbited on for. So I've got... I'll just recap it quick just in case. There's 15,000 staples over there that are the wrong size. And then I ordered the right size um, because it's an unusual size stapler gun that come from Amazon. You can only get these staples from America and Asia. So I have to wait for these to come. And of course, you can't buy one box, you've got to buy two. So that's another 20,000. Uh, everything else is kind of fine. So I'm going to go going to go back in, done enough for today, um, finish, won't finish the video here, I will come out and do a little bit more, I think I'm not going to video doing the exchanging those crappy bits over, um, but I'll let you have a look when they're done, and then I can then start to make my mind up, I think the next thing to do then is have a go at rubbing the tank down and polishing it back. I've tried to give it a polish already but it can only get a matte finish on it and when you look at it in certain lights there's, there's millions and millions of scratches in it so I think what I need to do is to sand it right back and then start coming up with the 320, the 400, the 600, the 800, the 1000, 1500, 2000 and maybe 3000 and get it as smooth as I can then put the buffing wheel on it and we should get a bit of shine. That's all for this bit. Catch you in a minute.
Okay, so I've started to uh, rub the tank down and I can only go so far because I thought I had the right sanding discs and the finest grit I've got is only an 800. So I've taken out the bulk of it. There's still a couple of little rough bits. So for the moment I've just done this flat side and the opposite flat side just to see how it goes because it wasn't too bad but I just couldn't get it to, to shine. Um, put the buffing pad on it and I watched people on YouTube and some said to use a foam pad, some said not to use a foam pad. I tried it with both and I just couldn't get a shine. And there was no like major damage but like 38 years or however long it is worth of little nicks where stones of it and that. And I've just seen a bit there that I've missed so do that while I see it. <laughs> doing a combination of dry sand and wet sand just to keep on top of it. You can still feel really really minor blemishes. I mean it's it's smooth but until I start getting the next couple of grits on it I've I think if I remember rightly I ordered an assorted pack which had the 600 and the 800 that I've already got and then it went a th 1,500, 2,000 and then I can't remember if it went two and a half or three but if I need to go back and start again so be it but I'm, I'm kind of happy with the way that it's feeling it, it didn't look crappy but it did feel like uneven and I guess that was why it wouldn't polish up you've got to be really careful that you don't go too mad with it and, and melt it as well so uh, once I get the finer grit out of this, kind of what it does is it pushes the first layer or the top layer of the plastic over. If it gets too hot, it melts it. I think that's where the wheel skipped. But, um, so yeah, I just wanted to give you that bit bit more info. I'm not sure, we're, let me have a look see if the camera's going to pick that up because that would be an ideal bit to show you. So from most angles you can't see it but on this angle that bit's not been done yet, not been touched at all and it's just like millions and millions of really fine, it's not even really picking it up on my fingernail. Just, but very minimal. So, I'm not going to bore you with watching me sand it because it's well boring for want of a better fucking description. Um, apologies if you can hear like a fan noise in the background. That's the battery charger charging because I've killed one battery. Mind you, it hasn't been charged for like God knows how long. Probably a year since I last charged it. But when you're sanding, it goes out quite a lot. Right, so I've moved you around a little bit and turned off the charger for a minute because you're right next to where the charger is so I think you'll pick up just charger and not me. So yeah, since the last bit I've just started a little bit of the sanding on here. When the other discs come in a couple of days time, I mean I've got hundreds of bloody discs but loads of really heavy duty which I don't want, that's got to be really fine now. Um, I went back onto the bike um, when you saw me slating the throttle and stuff like that. There it is. What a piece of shit. I can't even remember what fucking make this is. Let's have a look, see if I can find it. It might be a Pico. But I've never uh, felt or used 
such absolute crap in my life. The throttle cable wasn't brilliant either. So anyway, we well, can see my my thoughts on the matter. I just cut the fucking thing off and that's for the bin. So last night uh, throttle cable got changed, uh, the throttle got changed, uh, put new gator on the clutch lever because for some reason the clutch cable didn't come with one, I'm guessing it assumed there'd be one on the bike so I ordered one of them and that come in. Um, what else did we do? Oh, changed over the kill switch as well. Put the new grips on both sides. And then this morning, today's now Saturday, I come out here and made a quick start. I've done about half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. Might be a bit longer. Um, but the main thing that I wanted to let you know is a bit of an apology really because for the last five or six maybe seven videos on this or since I changed the camera actually um, I kept losing footage and I couldn't understand why at first I was thinking silly sod you haven't pressed the record button again and then I had a couple of files that corrupted so certain bits got missed out it would be like halfway through sanding this tank for example and then the next thing it's on the bike all done and i'm doing more plastics or something and i found out what it is so i use avs for you editing suite and when you put the and i've tried it on a gopro because i've still got a couple of gopro cameras as well i've tried putting um, a little bit of video on a sim and uploading that and it causes the same issue and what it is is let's say you've got a 10 minute um, video when you add it from wherever you've saved it or you've, yeah from wherever you've saved it if you save it to videos or, or whatever and then you upload that to the AVS video editor if it's 10 minutes long it doesn't do it all the time but on every, I don't know, fifth one or something like that, out of that 10 minutes, it only uploads three and a half minutes. And I just happened to notice it the other day by sheer fluke, the cursor came over the little icon for the latest bit that I'd uploaded and it showed nine minutes. And I'm thinking, well, why is it showing me nine minutes on there? And on the timeline on the software, it's only showing me three and a half minutes or whatever it was. And I just could not get it to, I, deleted it put it back on deleted it put it back on could not get it to do it so I thought well I'll try something different and I still had the sim card uh, not sim card SD card plugged into the laptop so I went straight to the card and uploaded it from there bang straight in nine and a half minutes or however long it was so I found out what the issue is and we shouldn't be missing any more information fingers crossed I'm not holding my breath because <laughs> there's still Mr. Stupid going to be involved but um, yeah so I've identified that and I kind of got the bug for getting it done again now um, it's surprising you, you do a couple of bits and then last night when I was in here what did I, I did the, the throttle the throttle cable the clutch lever gator the kill switch, tidied all the cables up, I obviously had carb out, well, top of the carb off to put the cable in and everything, and the whole thing took me 40 minutes, something like that, um, oh and new grips as well, and then when you actually film in it, probably <laughs> about an hour to hour and a quarter, um, so yeah I managed to get quite a bit done, um, but I'm not moaning, don't get me wrong, but it's, um, a lot of people have been saying recently, um, people don't realise how long it takes or how much longer it makes the job take when you're filming. So I'm going to, this video will end when I've finished with the tank. Um, there's going to be another two to three days before the rest of the discs get here. Um, 
So as I said, today's Saturday. I'm not going to get anything Sunday, so sort of Tuesday, Wednesday, I should get the disc. And as luck would have it, I'm off work Thursday and Friday. So I can really crack on with that. Won't mean any time difference to you. You're going to get it in the next 20 seconds. Okay, anybody want any hiccups? I'll keep getting them. I'm giving them away for free. Um, and then, yeah, once that tank's done, that can go on and be fixed into place. The seat can go on, which is sitting over there. Um, then I can have a look. So this is where I'm getting torn into two. Do I put the plastics on and then try and work round them? Um, I know I'm going to have a slight issue with the rear mudguard because I think the subframe was slightly out of square and originally I thought, oh it is. Then I tried to level it all out and thought, oh no it's not. Then I was thinking it is again. And I've managed to find that this, you're not going to see it, the right hand side is very, very slightly higher than the left hand side. So I don't know whether it's gone ass over tip or what. Um, but you have to straighten it in the bike. And I've had a bar on it. And luckily, I think I've managed to do it. Um, I mean, we're only talking a couple of millimetres. But I was having issues getting the holes line up on the, the airbox. So we'll see what happens when I put the rear mud guard on. Um, yeah. Maybe clean up the brake calipers while I'm waiting. Little things like that I can do off camera. Because it's, it's boring. Um, just watching somebody sit there. I'm waffling. Sorry. Getting a bit tired. I'll leave this bit here. And I'll be back with you when the new discs arrive. different thing with the tank. It's um, It's been sanded and sanded and sanded and sanded and it's like it's probably smoother than the bit that's not even been touched but whatever I do when I polish it I just can't get it to, to shine. So we're going to try the heat method. So first thing I'm going to do, the tank is empty but obviously there'll still be residue and that. This is going to be fun isn't it? Let's see if I can get this in there. There we go. Any residue of petrol will now be well and truly mixed with that soapy water. So we shouldn't get any bangs. But if we do, it's been nice knowing you. You can 
see brand new came today That's on maximum now. Let's see what happens. Hmm. It does work kind of, but it actually feels, apart from it being bloody hot, it actually feels rougher now than before. So I'm not 100% okay with it. I think it one little bit that blistered, but it appears to have gone back down. I just happened to see it just start to bubble.
don't know how hot the end of this is going to be. So it can sit in here for a minute. I know it's going to be too hot to bloody touch. So that's the brake caliber of caliber caliper I've rebuilt. So I didn't hear the camera cut out after 10 minutes because I had the air gun on or the hot air gun. And I've done this side a bit. It's surprising how hot that plastic gets, even with a still full of water. And it actually feels rougher now than it did before. But it might be I've just not let it get quite hot enough. So I need to have a little practice. But I'm a bit reluctant to practice on the tank. So I'm going to practice on one of the old plastics. And just get a bit of a better understanding. I've deliberately left the um, fill cap off. Just so that we don't get any pressure building up on the inside. And I've also got some... 1200 grit, 1500 grit, and 2000 or 2500 grit to come. So, we might have another go over it with that. There's a couple of areas just on the seam that are a little bit rough. It looks, it's taken away a lot of that sanded look, but it's still nowhere near right. So, I'm going to practice on giblet. On old plastics. I'm not sure whether you got the bit about me saying about the brake caliper. Um, that's all been stripped down, cleaned, rebuilt, um, touched up and now all hunky-dory. Um, so that's ready to go on the bike. Now let's spin you round. The hell braided hose is in as are the hose clamps ready for the caliper to go on the bottom brake levers back on brake reservoirs back on um, and I couldn't get there was a like a fitting in there that was a male into the bottom of the reservoir with a female end on it and the hose had a female end on it as well and I couldn't get the the old fitting out and when I took the old cable off there was about three or four that were all coupled together eventually I managed to get it out and then there's a male to male adapter in the kit so that's in when it's on it will be sort of kind of like that when the calipers on at the moment it's just it'll sit there for a bit and then it will rock down everything else is that bit done spokes are due to turn up tomorrow that was another palaver so we're actually getting somewhere at last and I think once the spokes turn up and that wheel's done we can get the wheels back in it then it's just really a case of putting the back brake on which I might do this weekend we've got visitors so that might slow me down a bit otherwise I'll get the back brake on and then once the wheels are in that just leaves the chain and the plastics I think and then obviously I've got to bleed the brakes so we're getting there slowly so I'm probably going to call that it for this video because um, I really can't remember it's been so bitty this one I just can't remember what I've actually got on the footage until I go back in and start editing um, so apologies if it comes across a bit bitty later on but I think I've managed to follow a pattern um, and yeah, I'll get it all uploaded. Today's Thursday. I'm off work tomorrow. Anniversary tomorrow, so I best behave myself and look after the missus. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll get it up over the weekend. 
videos we're talking now. Um, yeah, hopefully then we can get the wheels back. They should be back this week, hopefully, or this coming week. Get them on. Get the uh, get them built up because they've got new discs, new sprockets to go on them. Get the chain on. Get the back wheel in. Get the chain on. Uh, get that adjusted. Get the front in. Get the brake on. Bleed the brakes. Get the plastics on. And get that tank finished. And then we, I think we're done. I'm bound to have missed something, but hey ho. I'll catch you all on the next one. Take care.